But I have to be honest, I think always there's been a little bit of an interest at least. Even when I was in high school growing up in northern Wisconsin with frigid cold winters, I seem to remember trying to go outside barefoot and I seem to remember going to parties in college in my sandals even in the middle of winter. So it's always been a part of me. But it wasn't until my early 20s I was in New Zealand and Australia and I had a mentor. I was doing a study abroad program and this guy, his name is Gary, he's from Tasmania, a pretty wild guy and we'd be climbing over mountains on our hikes and this guy would be doing it barefoot. Everything we were doing, whether it was climbing or hopping over rocks or walking through town, this guy was barefoot. And I saw that and it just intrigued me. And I thought, hey, if Gary can do this, then I have to be able to as well. So I started to take my shoes off and walk with Gary. And at first, maybe I'd only make it a half mile or a mile, but qu pretty quickly I was making it a little bit more and a little bit more. And that's what I did. I started off small and built it up and built it up. A few years later, I remember I was in Northport, New York, and there was a 10K, the Cow Harbor 10K, and I had never run a competitive 10K, that's six kilometers, I'm not really a competitive person, but I decided, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to try to do it barefoot and see what happens. So I started out in the back of the pack thinking that I would be pretty slow with everybody else having shoes and wanting to take it easy and I started out and I just found myself passing dozens and dozens and then hundreds and hundreds of people and I finished the race in about 44 minutes I think it was it was the fastest that I've ever ran you know really one of the fastest I've ever ran in my entire life and it was barefoot so what happened was I just found myself continuously exceeding what I thought that I could do with my body and I found my body working naturally and I found myself working within the boundaries that I had with my body and I just grew into it. Now a lot of people they can understand walking barefoot you know at the beach or maybe in a nice field or hiking in a you know smooth place but I go barefoot pretty much everywhere even in the streets of New York or in the alleys I'm generally always barefoot. Now I put on shoes sometimes of course especially when I'm visiting colder climates but generally my goal is to try to be barefoot as much as I possibly can. So being barefoot for me is definitely about freedom. I get a great sense of freedom from being barefoot but it's about so much more than that. For me it's about allowing my feet to do what they've been designed to do. So there's a couple of things that I want to talk about that I'd like you to think about. First of all, let's talk about the modern shoes and we'll start with arch support. So arch support, this is your arch right here and the idea of arch support is it supports that arch. Now the problem with that if you've ever broken a bone and had to wear a cast or know a friend who has, what you've seen is that by not using something, it atrophies. And the problem that I see with arch support is when you support the arch, it doesn't have to do its job anymore and it atrophies. So these modern shoes actually can create weaker feet and it's not just the arch, it's the muscles it's the ligaments and it's the tendons. Our feet have a higher concentration of muscles, ligaments and tendons than many parts of our body. And wearing these shoes that give that support actually meet, allow for the feet to not have to be strong and not have to be able to do what they naturally do. Now it doesn't just end at the feet though. Of course we know everything about us is intricately connected. It's very easy to remove things and say this is your eye and that's your foot and it has absolutely nothing to do with each other but of course we know that's not true. Everything is intricately, intricately connected. So 
when your feet aren't working in that natural way and you have that support, that can throw off your legs, it can throw off your lower back, it can throw off your back. And so these shoes can actually cause not just foot problems, but problems throughout your whole body. So for me, being barefoot is allowing, it's about allowing my body to work as it has been designed over hundreds of thousands of years. Another thing that's really special about the feet is the feet have more nerve endings in the bottom of our feet than most other parts of our body. I have to imagine that the lips would have more nerve endings, for example, they're so sensitive. But of all the places of our body, this has one of the highest concentrations of nerve endings. Now, why would that be? <laughs> Why, why would that be the case if they were designed to just be stuck inside of a foot? My belief is that the shoes cut off the body's ability to receive information. So when I'm running barefoot and I'm walking barefoot, my body is able to receive all of that information and have me be more connected to my surroundings, more connected to the earth that is underneath me. And I believe that cutting off those nerve endings can have very meaningful implications as well. There's something that happens when you start to let those nerve endings do their job and this is a part of being barefoot and that is that you develop calluses. So I like to say that it might appear that I'm not wearing shoes but in a way I actually am. They are a naturally built-in sole right to the foot. So my sole is very thick and I can step if I step on thorns, for example, most of the time they just go in a tiny way, not even to the sensitive part, not, not to the part that hurts because the callus has been built over it. So I'm able to step on little pieces of glass, for example, which I do sometimes, and it generally goes into the callus and doesn't go uh, deep in. So a lot of people worry about these things like that. Oh, people always say, well, doesn't it hurt? Don't you get injured? Well, first of all, you build it up over time. If you've been wearing shoes for decades, it takes you time for your feet to re-liberate and become a part of the land. But also, again, just remember, these were designed to function in the first place. A lot of, I think, shoe, shoe industries today are multi billion dollar companies. This is a huge industry. Do you really think that the way they design everything is always for the best interest of our feet and our health? Or do you think that money may play a large role in the way they do things? There's actually studies out there that show that once shoes get above $100, you actually see more injuries. And that's the next big part that I really want to talk about and that is that by, by being barefoot what I've found is that I'm actually able to stay within my boundaries. Think about this for a second. Our shoes are designed with absorption, uh, shock absorption in them. You see on these commercials how it shows the perfect shock absorption. Okay, <laughs> I'm not a very good impersonator. But what, what, where do we see the most knee replacements and hip replacements? It's from sports like basketball, like tennis, like track and field on concrete where people are wearing shoes and just pounding their feet down. So by being barefoot, what happens is I am required to take that impact naturally. I use my legs and my feet to to step down and jump down in a way where I take that impact in. But what happens with the modern day shoes is they allow us to really hit down hard and it does take some of that impact, but not nearly enough. So what I found is that the modern day shoe actually allows me to go beyond the natural li limitations of my body and allows me to injure myself even more. So like I said, I've injured my feet a few times, but the injuries that I've had are minor compared to the long-term damaging injuries that you see in this societal way of just 
allowing ourselves and pushing our bodies beyond what they're actually keep capable of doing. So being barefoot forces me to stay within my body's capability. Now, speaking of forcing me to do what my body is designed to do and what I want to do, being barefoot also keeps me out of places that I don't want to go. You know the sign, no shoes, no shirt, no service. Well, a lot of places won't allow me in barefoot. One of those places is bars. I don't really want to drink very much. I don't really want to go to those places. So being barefoot actually prevents me from going to those places even when I might slip up and go to them because I'm often out and about with no shoes at all. So being barefoot just kind of keeps me outside and keeps me, if I'm not outside, in more chill places, the places that I want to be rather than in shopping malls and consumeristic places and bars. So being barefoot really just kind of forces me to live the life that I actually want. Another thing that being barefoot does is it forces me to slow down. I have to pay attention to where I'm going. With shoes, you can just plow over everything and not have to think about the ground beneath your feet. But whether I'm walking or I'm running, I mentioned that wearing shoes really connects me to my surroundings because I have to look where I'm going. So people worry about stepping in dog poop, for example. Well, I actually am watching where I'm going, so I'm less likely to step in dog poop than with shoes because I have to pay attention to my surroundings and I'll notice glass. People often that are walking with me are like, stop, Rob, there's glass. I know there's glass. I'm the barefoot one. I have to pay attention to that. So you start to pay more attention to your surroundings. But again, it slows me down. I want to live a relaxed life. I want to live stress-free and largely anxiety-free. And being barefoot really slows me down. It makes me have to pay attention to where I'm going. I can't as hurry as much. And it really, just as much as it keeps me working within my body's capabilities, it also keeps me slow and helps me to live a, a more, you know, relaxed, calm, stress-free life and again a big part of that is keeping me out of the places that that aren't a part of that. Back to the dog poop thing, what about the hygiene of being barefoot? The interesting thing about it is that being barefoot I find it's easier to practice good hygiene than with shoes and socks. That might be counterintuitive to a lot of people who think that the world is this dirty place and where germs are a, a bad thing. thing. Uh, that's a whole nother thing to go into or that I have gone into in other videos. But the important thing is there's a lot of problems that are created with shoes. And one of those is bacterial problems and fungal problems. Think about this for a second. Where does fungus grow? It grows in damp, dark places. If you have a wall that's in the blazing sunlight, that's not where fact bacteria and fungus grows. It's going to grow on the shady side of the house where it's cooler and where it is moist. So with feet, where is fungus going to grow? In damp socks inside shoes where it's dark and moist or on feet that are exposed to fresh air and sunlight? athlete's foot and foot fungus is a product of stuffing our feet inside of damp shoes, damp socks. Being barefoot prevents that fungus and prevents athlete's foot. So it's actually being barefoot is a form of good hygiene. As far as the, the dirt and stuff that gets onto the bottom of the foot, well, it's a wet day today, so you can see that there's dirt on the bottom of my foot. but the thing about being barefoot is I actually pay a close attention to my hygiene. My feet are very important to me. If I was wearing shoes, I could easily leave dog poop on the bottom in those crevices. But if I'm going to get something on my foot, I'm going to wash it off. So being barefoot actually creates naturally good hygiene. Another part of that is exfoliation. You see a lot of people's feet who has just so much dead skin on it and 
these toenails that are just gunked up. Well, walking barefoot is a natural exfoliation. In fact, my favorite way to exfoliate my whole body is to go to the beach and just use sand to rub my body. But my feet are being exfoliated constantly. So it, it, it builds up the callus as needed, but it doesn't hold on to all the dead skin. So it's another form of good natural hygiene. A couple more things. One is minimalism and money and sustainability, wrapping all those things together. So minimalist wise, some people have dozens of pairs of shoes. The average person, I don't know, might have a dozen pair of shoes. Sustainability wise, that's extremely destructive to have, to need so much. For me, this is about saying, I don't need so much. I'm a human being with a human body and I can exist without so much of a need for such a large amount of modern produced stuff. Now, companies like Nike tell you that you're supposed to replace your shoes every 500 miles. That creates an incredible amount of garbage and pollution but it also burns a lot of money. My goal is to live with very little money and my bare feet are definitely a representation of that. I've been wearing, I've had two pairs of shoes for the last about four years. So you can imagine just how much less money I spent, how much less trash that I create, how much less dependent that I am on these, this industry that I see as a destructive industry. And of course, as I said, being barefoot keeps me out of the shops. So I can actually spend a lot less money in that way. So those are some of the reasons that I'm barefoot. Those are some of the benefits that I've seen from it. And those are just things that I think are, are worth thinking about. And it's not about, you know, any form of being dogmatic and doing something 100% of the time. My goal is to work with the earth, to tread lightly on the earth, to enjoy my treading on the earth and be connected to it. And being barefoot as much as I can does that. If I'm in cold climates, again, I wear shoes, but if it gets up to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, on a warm day, I'll try to get out, especially even the blacktop can be warm on days like that. So I do what I can to be barefoot as much as I can. If it's cold outside, at least I can be barefoot at home and giving my feet that, that fresh air and that connectedness. If you are interested in walking barefoot and connecting to the earth in that way, then I recommend starting somewhere. You have to start with where you are and who you are in the place that you're in. That is what you have to do is embrace the situation. So start walking barefoot, maybe just around your yard, then maybe around the block, then maybe walk a mile, then go for a walk in the woods. And you can start by walking in the easier places, the places that are smoother and, and softer, rather than starting on, you know, really difficult gravel, for example. So start where you are, start small, if it's your desire to walk barefoot. At the very least, remember to question these basic things, question these industries that we know their ethics are flawed, and just go deeper with these things. So I hope that you got a lot out of that. At the very least, just thinking about it, thinking about the evolution of our feet and thinking about the very basic thought of what's got it better figured out? Hundreds of thousands of years of evolution or Nike in the last hundred years? My bet is on evolution. Thank you all for tuning in. I love you all very much. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't and you want more content like this. Invite your friends and share this video with anyone you think would benefit. And uh, go ahead and comment if you have questions. 